If you're interested in changing the West Virginia Democratic Party, this is how. Real change doesn't take place on Capitol Hill. It takes place in grassroots America. It takes place when millions of working people, young people, and senior citizens come together to demand that our government works for all of us and not just the 1%. When the people lead, the leaders follow. Bernie Sanders. So, let's get busy leading. So let me begin just by saying why it's important that we try to fix our state party. The state party has an enormous responsibility or ability to either support candidates or not, to give or withhold resources from, from candidates and from committees, things like fundraising lists. They can either promote candidate events through email or social media, or they could ignore candidate events. They can give or withhold access to voter databases, which is extremely important for candidates. They can either choose to share or withhold information from Democrats, like, you know, when are meetings going to be held and access to minutes and things like that, things that help us make decisions. And uh, another aspect might be to take the state platform, um, either promote it if they like it or disparage it if they tend to not like it. It's the opinion of some that our current state party does a lot of the supporting type activities to conservative candidates that they like and um, do a lot of the withholding type of activities to perhaps candidates that are more progressive. And we just think that all Democrats are important to have support from the party and let the voters decide on which candidates they like best. And I'll also go back and forth between talking in this video as if, you know, people who are watching the video are going to run, and then also somewhat um, as if talking to people who are supporting other people running. Um, it takes teamwork. Everybody has an important role to play. If we want the party to change, then we need to either get the current leadership to change or we need to become the leadership. The rest of this video is going to be about how to become a member of the State Executive Committee of the West Virginia Democratic Party the, and how to support other people to become these leaders. The West Virginia Democratic Party Executive Committee runs the party. They make all the decisions. The, this is where we need to start. These are the documents that you would want to refer back to, the rules and regulations for the Democratic Party in West Virginia, and also um, their specifics laid out in the West Virginia State Code. The State Executive Committee is chosen every four years in the midterm elections. So we just had a presidential election in 2016. The midterm will be in 2018. Um, they're chosen by Senate districts, so this map shows 17 Senate districts. Each Senate district will choose two men and two women to represent them on the State Executive Committee. It's also important to note that only two people from the same county can serve on the committee. It's also important to note that this election is only in the primary. The final results are in the primary. There's not a general election. All right, so this sad drawing represents 17 Senate districts in West Virginia. The red dots here represent women. We will elect two women uh, per each of the 17 districts. The green dots represent men and there are two men per district. So we'll end up electing two men and two women from each of the 17 districts. So we have four people per district, 17 districts, 17 times four is 68. So we have elected 68 people. In addition to the 68 elected members, there are five automatic members. They're the presidents of the um, County Democratic Chairs Association, the West Virginia Young Democrats, and the West Virginia Federation of Democratic Women. Also a Demo Democratic member of the House of Delegates and one state senator are automatic members. So 68 elected members plus five automatic members is 73. Those 73 then choose three at-large members in the state. One of them will automatically be um, the past chairperson, and then they're just 
the two other ones are any West Virginia Democrat. And that you have 76 voting members. Okay, now we've managed to get a bunch of good people elected as the voting members on the executive committee, and we've picked some good at-large people, hopefully, through other avenues. We've gotten some good people in as those presidents, um, and you think, okay, now we've got a good state executive committee. No, now comes the most important part. It's time to elect officers. So I want to go over how they select officers. They have a whole bunch of officer positions, but I'm only going to mention a few right now, um, specifically the chair, vice chair, treasurer, and secretary. So they'll take nominations uh, from those members. Now the important thing to know is you do not have to be somebody who is a voting member to be an officer. They can pick from anybody in the state that is a Democrat. And that's often what happens, not always, but often. And often, I think, what happens is somebody very, very influential either is at the meeting or instructs people outside of the meeting who they want or they think that should be in those positions. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but um, it's important for the people who were elected by their districts to make sure that the people who get in the officer positions are going to represent those people that put them there. And here's just sort of an example. Uh, people in green would be voting members. People uh, in blue would be non-members. So you could end up having a chair who is a uh, you know, duly elected member, a vice chair who is a non-member of the committee, treasurer non-member, secretary a member, and a few other uh, officers that are kind of mixed up. Now, why is this important? Well, the, P the officers run the entire party. The voting members are only required to meet one time of a year. Um, so really, especially the chairperson runs the party. They hire and supervise the, the staff in the office. They set the direction. Uh, they're supposed to follow the direction of uh, the entire committee, but they may or may not do that. So picking good officers, especially a good chairperson, is critical to changing the party to be representative of the people. The committee picks two other positions. Um, they're called the West Virginia uh, DNC man and the West Virginia DNC woman. These are people specifically selected to represent the West Virginia Democratic Party on the national level. So these are people who are automatic voting members of the DNC. They do not have to come from the original committee. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it right now, but I think it's important to know that the people that we choose to be the chair, the vice chair, the DNC man, and the DNC woman from West Virginia then go on to the, you know, the national, the DNC, and they are in charge of voting on issues like picking who their chairperson um, of the DNC and those office, officers are and the direction of the DNC. So it's just important for us to know that we feed people into the DNC and when we're very careful and deliberate and make sure that the people that we feed into the DNC are quality people who represent us, then we're going to end up with a, uh, our party, a party that actually represents us. And that's going to be a great thing. You may be thinking about this time, where exactly do we start? And so I'm going to give us some suggestions on that. People in each of those 17 Senate districts need to be thinking right now about who do they want to be voting on in 2018. Who is going to run? The, there's some steps that need to be taken in terms of registering at the Secretary of State's office. And um, I don't think it's going to be an expensive campaign, but you probably do want to raise some money and you know plan some speeches and to talk to people. But getting yourself out there and getting your name out there now is important. And if you're not the person to run, that's okay, but find somebody who will. And know exactly where your Senate district is. Most every Senate district is multiple counties. Get to know the other Democrats in the other county and um, identify different people um, 
to, to run. You need two men and two women. And remember that only two people from one county can serve um, can serve on the um, state executive committee. So if you have three people that have the highest uh, number, the the one who has the lowest number. Uh, will be kicked off and then somebody from another county that didn't have as many votes will be on the committee. If you haven't already started attending local Democratic meetings, I would strongly encourage that, that you do that. Um, the main one is your county executive Democratic committee and those are voted on at the exact same time the state executive committee uh, in almost the same process except they do it by county and magistrate districts and they're usually I think two men and two women from each district or something like that. I'll, I'll learn more about that later. but. Um, you want to attend those meetings, uh, contact whoever the chair is and uh, talk to them, ask them when the meeting is and show up. Most always they will be very, very happy to have uh, have new people there. Um, the If you are under 40, you can also join uh, the Young Democrats. Um, and if you're not under 40, uh, you can attend those meetings. You can't vote, but you can attend and, and help and help get them moving along. And if you're uh, a woman, you can attend the local, uh, almost every county has a local, what they call, a, you know, women's groups. Uh, but the official name is Federation of Democratic Women. And most counties have a chapter, not everyone, but most, most of them do. And um, that's a state organization that's under the umbrella of the um, state you know, Democratic Party. Um, and they actually have a lot of power. If you're a man, you can attend those meetings. You can't vote, but you can attend and, and help and uh, volunteer and get to know people. I just want to be up front um, going to these political meetings. It's it's not a picnic. It's not a place to go and make friends. Now I'm not going to say you're not going to make friends there. You probably will find very like-minded people and, and connect with them and that's a good thing. But this is not a social event. When you go to these meetings, we need people who you know have strong ideas are willing to stand up for their ideas are not worried about you know oh well what if such and such doesn't approve of this and and I don't get appointed to the blah 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 like we don't need people like that we need people showing up that want to make their communities better and are willing to work for it and a person who will fight you on one issue will turn around on on a different issue they'll be your ally on the on the next issue so I'm just telling you it's it's work okay to sum up you want to identify two men and two women in your Senate district to run or you may choose to be one of those people yourself hopefully so you want to learn what paperwork needs to be filed by when at the Secretary of State's office and you'll have to pay a small fee it's my understanding that filing um, for this position will be um, January 8th through the 27th of 2018, but you can file pre-candidacy papers now and start uh, doing some fundraising. You want to attend all or as many as possible Democratic meetings in your district, and you want to attend all or as many as possible state and district Democratic meetings. You want to know who the players are, who's calling the shots, who is on the right side of things and who needs to go, um, who are your allies, who thinks like you, who um, who's going to be there for you, that sort of thing. You want to get your name out by attending different meetings and talking to people and you want to get your message out. Why are you running? Why is this important to you? And you want to talk to people and you want to really listen to people. You can't represent the people in your district if you don't know what they want. So it's very important to talk and listen to the average Democratic voter in your district. And finally, you do need to do some fundraising and you need to recruit some volunteers. It's not going to be you know, very, very expensive, but you certainly want to have some money and some volunteers on your side. Okay, after we have people elected to the State Executive Committee, we want for all of those people to get to know each other, make sure that they know who was elected and who is hanging around them that wasn't elected. Um, we want them to discuss the direction of the party. 
Um, we want people, good people, to run for office positions, uh, the officer positions, and uh, to identify other people who are potentially uh, good officers. And when it's come time to do the election, you absolutely want to elect good officers, especially a really, really good chairperson and a vice cha chairperson, because they will then become members of the DNC. We want them to elect a really good DNC man and DNC woman, because they will then become DNC members. We, um, I think that it would be important to meet often. Um, the state executive committee is only required to meet yearly, but I think if they met uh, more often, um, they could definitely have a closer eye on the direction that the party is going and make sure that the state party is meeting the needs of the local county committees who are doing all of the groundwork. And just a quick disclaimer, um, nobody official, this is a grassroots effort to try to make our party better. And um, the information here should just be looked at as just a guide to get somebody started. I also want to say that I do not mean to imply that I'm disparaging anybody that is currently on the State Executive Committee or influencing the State Executive Committee. Um, they learned a long time ago the information that we is shared in this video. They know how to get things done the way they want it done. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, this is just an opportunity for the rest of us to figure out what we want and how to influence the party to get what we want. I think that there's plenty of room in the party for moderates and progressives. I think it's just important for our party to acknowledge that and be open to letting the voters decide um, what they want and for the party to, um, to follow the direction of the people. Here's some resources that might get you started. Uh, you want to go to the West Virginia Dems um, page. Um, you also want to go to the Federation of Democratic Women page and Young Dems. You do not have to be a woman. You do not have to be under 40 to participate in those organizations. The most important resource that you need to run for anything is the West Virginia Secretary of State's um, website and access to their office. You can Google uh, West Virginia Secretary of State. Uh, you can then go to elections and then candidate and committees and then you can look at pre-candidacy filing and also candidate forms. When you get to that website, um, the kind of flag picture there in the middle, um, hit select and the second thing, candidates and committees, you want to select that and then that will bring this up. The first thing is candidate forms, that's good, but the third one is filing pre-candidacy. That will give you a lot of information about you know, what is pre-candidacy, what does that mean, that sort of thing, give you a, a starting point. And then this is candidate forms, there's a variety of forms that you may or may not need at some point. Now, there is so much information that's available on the Secretary of State's website. You just really have to play around with it to um, just to see, but it is an amazing website. Um, you can look at past elections. You can download spreadsheets of, you know, voter counts and things like that. You can see who ran in past elections for any position, who won, um, including, you know, the Democratic uh, Committee, County, and State Executive Committees. Uh, you can look and see how many votes they had to win to give you an idea of how much you will have to win. You can, somewhere on that website, you can look and see what their treasurer reports were so you can have an idea of how much money they got, where they got their money, where they spent their money, um, so you give an, get an idea of how much a campaign will cost you. It's, it's an amazing, amazing um, treasure of information that you can use not just for this adventure but for uh, supporting you know other offices or running for other offices as well. Well good luck please let me know if this was helpful and if you're planning to run or to help someone else run you can contact me at politicalrevolutionwv at gmail.com and um, really hope we can work together to make our state a better place. Thank you.